I'm smoking on some strong. Got bitches who smoke bongs, papers, and bowls. So pretty much anything goes. Come and kick it with blow. Some of this chronic smoke. Go to stores to cop shit even when they say they close. These Louis, I suppose. And right now I'm high, my eyes so freaking low. I might as well keep them closed. You fucking with winners. Cushion orange juice with my eggs. Flicking my ashes off dinner, nigga. Cameron Jabril Thomas, a.k.a. Wiz Khalifa, born September 8, 1987. Today's feature is one of the top earning and standout rappers of the 2010s, so in no way does this story negate what he's been able to do with his career. Wiz Khalifa is also one of my favorite artists as far as the moves he's been able to make in his career that's allowed him the freedom to now after almost 20 years active in the game, he can sit back and make the music and take the opportunities he so chooses. In a rap journey, the above is really all you can ask for. But of course, some hip hop fans of that era will always feel that with the success, along with the unique talent and lane Wiz Khalifa had, especially at his peak in 2015, things should have went a little different. In that perspective, I'll explain why I think those fans may feel that way. I'm sure most of you are aware of Wiz Khalifa and the interesting lane he found and dominated throughout his career. The high lane or high way, where although certainly not a new thing, but early in the 2010s it became a fad again with the youth, especially in hip hop, where the sound of rap music would become much more party driven and emotional. Earlier in rap, Snoop Dogg was really the first to become known as THE weed rapper and he's also become very successful in that lane. Wiz Khalifa came in the perfect time when Snoop's career was already set in stone and even if it didn't know it, the game needed a fresh new Snoop, if you will, only this one was ready to perfectly fit into the lifestyle of urban culture. I'll even go as far as to say Wiz Khalifa was the first rapper that made the smoke picture cool. A small achievement, but being first or known for anything in music in general can go a long way. He was 7 mixtapes in before his 8th Cushion Orange Juice hit the scene in 2010 and catapulted Wiz to the top of the ladder for backpack rappers making their way to begin the decade. The Mac Millers, Big Sean, Currency, Tyler the Creator, Travis Scott's and Wale's of the world to name a few all played second fiddle to the potential Khalifa had. The mixtape is held by a lot of Wiz Khalifa fans as his best work to date. While Lil Wayne, Kanye West, Jay-Z, A Young Drake and more fought for the traditional best rapper alive spot, Wiz Khalifa was content setting the mood in his lane with his loyal fan base that all enjoyed everyone's favorite pastime when listening to music. His debut major label album Rolling Papers was highly anticipated and sold well at almost 200,000 first week and over 2 million to date. It stamped Wiz as a viable artist to watch going forward. Fast forward to 2022, his latest release and Wiz doesn't even enter the charts. What happened to Wiz Khalifa's career? Let's talk about it. Salute to Dominic Ward for this request. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth Music. Let's get him. Take a minute to like, subscribe and comment on who I should do next. Wiz Khalifa is a 2010s rapper from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania by way of North Dakota that got his name first from his uncle he shared a group with that went by the name Knowledge. Wiz wanted a name like that and settled on Wisdom first. His uncle then added the Khalifa, which means successor, and Wiz ran with the name Wisdom Khalifa for a short time, then shortened it to just Wiz Khalifa. In 2004, Pittsburgh rap scene was under the radar but competitive and Wiz was just one of a bunch trying to make a name. He submitted his song to be hosted on a mixtape of the best Pittsburgh rap talent, which is where Rostrum Records president first heard and understood Wiz's potential and signed him. From 2004 to 2010, Wiz, like any other freshly signed artist in that era, hit the artist development grind, releasing mixtapes and building his fan base. He also released his debut in 2006 and another album in 2009 that got little notoriety. 
He did happen to grace the cover of Double XL as a part of their annual freshman list. When Cushion Orange Juice dropped in 2010, sparked a way for Khalifa, leading to the 2010 hit single Black and Yellow's release going six times platinum, creating ultra hype for Wiz as an artist. Stunt number one, going the pop route. Now remember that this is solely off the perspective of some rap fans who either rode with Wiz during his Kush and OJ smooth, melodic, mood-setting rap days, or fans that weren't particularly up on Wiz but would hear his popular music on the radio or countdown shows like MTV. When Rolling Papers dropped in 2011, Wiz received mixed reviews from his fans. The ones that were more open to all sorts of music genres appreciated the transition he took on the album, making more pop rap inspired songs like Roll Up or No Sleep, while diehard fans had to settle for remnants of old Wiz like Rooftops or Fly Solo. Yes, it was heavily inspired by Wiz wanting to take another step in his career, going the pop route but it should have been expected that an artist like Wiz Khalifa with all the talent and factors of a star would take. In hindsight, it was probably his least pop sounding major label album. It went double platinum, so I'm sure at least he's satisfied with where his career was headed. Deciding to go the pop route or stay the same artist your fans grew in love is a fork in the road decision all artists that make it to that point have to make. I understand it because to me, talent-wise, Wiz fit much more on that side of the tracks than being a traditional rapper. I think the problem some fans have is from that point, Wiz never looked back and continued down the LA pop superstar route, leaving some of his old fans behind. Stunt number two, Rap Shelf Life Happened. In entertainment, we all have to understand that things don't last forever. People will always want more or something new to replace what they've already enjoyed enough. You take music and you think about how often you're taking part in enjoying it, which for some is as soon as they wake up to the time they lie back down. Some even sleep with music playing in the background. That's a lot of listening to the same album or same song, feeling those same emotions that connected you to it in the first place over and over again. Eventually, you will want to move on. Ever had a song where you said on the first few listens that you could never get tired of it? You play it on repeat for about three days and then you can't stand hearing it anymore. For artists, that's the way it kinda goes. At some point, even your diehard fans will become drained of your music after let's say three to five years. Some will just listen to you less while the others will find a reason they can't listen anymore. Maybe a new girlfriend you got that they don't like, or a collab you did they didn't appreciate, or you changing the music they grew to love, and now all of a sudden, to them, you fell off. There's so many factors as to why fans move on from artists, so surviving all those for over 15 years and still have enough of their attention is a win. Wiz has been out since 2006, that's almost 20 years. To have three platinum albums and a gold one and still somewhat have a strong fan base is all you can ask for. Stunt number three, allow to retire early. And finally, what I don't even see as a growth stunt, but a reason everything changed about Wiz was when he, DJ Frankie and Charlie Puth wrote and released the song See You Again, a tribute song to Fast and Furious actor Paul Walker. Just with the names mentioned involved and the tragic situation involving one of America's beloved actors, that song was meant to be a hit and was one of the biggest songs of all time. It was number one everywhere across the world seeing as who can't relate to losing and missing someone else. Eventually it went diamond, selling over 11 million and became Wiz's biggest song ever. After that song, it seemed to have put Wiz in another mindset altogether. To me, that's when he finally retired from the rat race a rap career could be. From then, he just did him, stayed out the way and made the music he wanted to make while still being booked to perform and do hosting events or whatever else. We all have that point where we know if we reach it, we'll just relax and finally get to do some shit we want to do. 
Since that song in 2015, it's like Wiz just chilled and was content with his career to that point, and I get it. He released Rolling Papers 2 three years later, and another album four years after that, clearly in cruise control ever since. All in all, like mentioned, I think Wiz did it right as a rap artist. Yes, he went pop when many wanted that old, chill, vibe out Wiz, and yes, he wifed a woman too short maybe wouldn't approve of, but he's had a great run, underrated even, tons of success, and young enough to now just kick back and enjoy it. Salute, much respect, but for these reasons, some Wiz fans think he fell off. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth Music, and I'm out.